Hello and welcome back to Forensic Bites. Today we're going to be talking about arguably the most important reagent used in presumptive drug testing, marquee reagent. To do that we're going to be referring to a new colour test chart, which is available online from Drug Policy Australia. Looking at it we can see that marquee reagent is the first test in the sequence, and the reason for that comes down to its intended reactivity. Marquee reagent will give a colour response for opioids, such as heroin, oxycodone and morphine, MDMA, which is molly or ecstasy, as well as amphetamines. Given the prevalence of these three drug classes, marquee reagent is probably going to give you some really informative information quickly, and the results it gives you can be used to guide further testing. So before we move on to how marquee works, I just thought I'd go through some of the features of the reagent colour chart because it's really one of the best ones I've come across, and I'm in the process of changing my teaching to incorporate it. On this slide I'm showing you the full suite of tests the chart covers, and it really is all the common presumptive tests that are available. The name of each presumptive test is given a colour code, and that corresponds to the test solutions provided in the kit. Underneath the name of each test is a colour bar, which represents a 20 second duration, so any change in colour is what you would see in the first 20 seconds after applying the test reagent, unless there's a specific caveat for longer times. So looking quickly at Simon's test, we can see that to perform Simon's test it's a yellow-green combination, so looking down here we would add a drop of the yellow reagent, followed by a drop of the green reagent, and then we would expect to see a transition from colourless to blue over 20 seconds for MDMA. Now I've had to cut back the chart for space reasons, but it covers all the common drug classes and examples. The instructions for drug testing are also very visual. So here you can see the amount of drug that you would test relative to a pressed pill or blotter paper for something like hallucinogens, and all of that is relative to the tip of a pin, which is a good common sense amount that doesn't require weighing. Over here you can see it tells you that you add one drop of each test solution, which probably means that most of these presumptive tests have been reformulated such that a single drop is all you require. Now that can make the test slightly less sensitive, but it comes with the benefit of being much more simple to use. So if you're interested in seeing these resources, just type Drug Policy Australia into Google and it should be one of the first hits that comes up. Anyway, back to Marquee Reagent, it's arguably the most important test that you will find in a commercial drug testing kit. It provides the best bang for buck in that it tests for opioids, amphetamines and MDMA. Now some of the issues that you come across using it though is that it can be highly subjective and some of the colour changes are relatively subtle to interpret. For instance if we look at the colour change for amphetamines, it's going from an orangey colour to a brick red, which can be difficult to interpret with confidence. Another problem is that some common cutting agents will give false positives for the different drug classes, which undermines its usefulness. Moving away from commercial drug testing kits and looking at a forensic standard operating procedure, we can see that Marque reagent is one of the first tests that you conduct straight after Mayer's reagent. This is for the same reasons we discussed before, it provides information across multiple drug classes, but regardless of what the result is, you're going to do additional tests to confirm that result. So if Marquee gives you a purple result for opioids, the next test you're going to do is MEX reagent, which gives you a green result for heroin, similarly for amphetamines or MDMA, if you get a positive result by Marquee reagent, you'll follow that up with Simon's reagent, which will give you a blue result for each of those results. Considering Marquee reagent has broad reactivity across different drug classes, the reagents within it need to be broadly reactive. And it does that with formaldehyde combined with a strong acid, in this case sulfuric acid. As a quick note, these are two of the more hazardous chemicals that are in common use. So sulfuric acid, I'd say is the strongest common acid that you can get your hands on, while formaldehyde acts like chemical glue, being able to fuse different components of drug together to give you a larger, more complex chemical at the end. The aim of the test is that we take our drug components, we fuse them together to get a larger molecule, and that molecule can act as a dye. In essence, it's not whether or not the drug components react, pretty much anything is going to react in this solution, it's whether or not you get a coloured complex at the end. 
given Marque reagent is so reactive, if you get it on your skin, the formaldehyde is going to start fusing your DNA together. Hence why the reagent has all of these hazard symbols associated with it for corrosiveness from the acid, we've got carcinogen from the formaldehyde. It's basically not very pleasant stuff. The way it works is basically an acid-mediated fusion of chemicals together using the formaldehyde to fuse them. If we take a look at a typical reaction shown on the slide, morphine is given here in blue, marquee reagents are shown here, so formaldehyde combined with strong acid, and the end product is two of these morphine molecules fused together with the formaldehyde building blocks shown here in red. The acid's only real purpose is to make the reaction go fast, and it's why you use sulfuric acid, which is the strongest acid. You want it to go as fast as possible. It would probably work with weaker acids like hydrochloric, but it wouldn't go as quickly. And one of the aspects of a good presumptive test is that you can get the result and move on. So morphine over here, it's an opioid and it's colourless. We know that from Marquee reagent, it's going to form a purple to black solid afterwards. And if we look at the morphine dimer over here, the actual colour comes from this conjugated core structure shown in purple. Without diving into the chemistry too deeply, if you have a conjugated system like this one with a positive charge, that charge can be shared across the molecule and this is one of the things that will absorb visible light and give you a coloured species at the end. Given Marquee works across multiple drug classes, we can have a look at another one in the form of amphetamine. Amphetamine is colourless and a relatively simple molecule shown over here. Here's Marquee's reagent, so formaldehyde and acid. Same sort of reaction here. We get acid-mediated fusion, wherein an amphetamine dimer forms, and this gives you a coloured species on this side. Now, anyone with a bit of chemistry training might look at that and go, why would I get a carbocation, something that fails the octet rule, at the end of the reaction? And the answer is mostly you don't. So the true product will be shown up here, so you can see the formaldehyde molecule, or the remains of it here. We have a protonated alcohol group at the top, which is essentially just water and a really good leaving group. If you remove that water, what we get is this chromophore, or coloured material here, which is a carbocation. So these two would be in equilibrium. It is very much mostly this one, but this is the coloured species down here, hence why we show it. We can also get a sense as to why there are different colours being formed in the reaction. So the overall dimerization motif is similar, depending on when you look at morphine or amphetamine. But in the case of morphine, it's a lot more rigid, so it's held together in this shape, and you've got oxygen atoms feeding electron density into the core, which gives you a purple colour. Looking at amphetamine, overall it's less rigid and we have less atoms feeding electron density into the core. So this one gives you an orange colour. I've also redrawn the structure just so you can see the conjugation more clearly by shifting the positive charge here. In reality, that positive charge is shared all across the core. To quickly talk about the false positives, a formaldehyde acid mixture is the chemistry equivalent of a sledgehammer. Things are going to react. So the question of the test is, are the products of the reaction going to be coloured or not? Now given Marque reagent is going to react with whatever you put in it, the number of dyes it could produce is unknowable. But there have been a number of tests on common cutting reagents, and aspirin for example is particularly problematic. If you add Marque reagent to a sample of aspirin, what you first get is a purple coloration forming after about 10 seconds, which is very similar to the result for opioids, and then over time it transitions into red, which is the result you would expect for amphetamines. This is going to create uncertainty whenever aspirin is used as a cutting agent for drug samples. So to conclude, Marque reagent has broad reactivity across several important drug classes, and this makes it one of the most commonly used presumptive tests for unknown drugs. It does have some problematic false positives though, which means that the results of the test need to be confirmed by other presumptive tests or even better instrumental tests. 
That said, the unique colour responses you see for the different drug classes make it an essential component of drug testing kits where you might encounter many different varieties of drugs, such as for pill testing at a music festival, for instance. That's all we have for today. Thanks for listening.